Hey everybody, I'm Jessica with Curious Kitty and for those of you who don't know me, um, so I, oh, I'm sorry, I am um, the face of, I'm the owner of CuriousKitty.com. We have all kinds of great American made pet supplies and today I'm here to talk to you about getting a first aid kit ready for your pets. So um, you probably already have a first aid kit in your home for you um, and for your family and that's great and I encourage you to expand upon that first aid kit and include um, a lot of other items that you would need for your pets because you never know what's going to happen. So. Um, twice a year typically I go through all of my first aid kits and check for anything that's expired and um, replace it and uh, at that time I usually uh, run through a list of items that I need in it and make sure that I do have everything um, if there's something else I think of or something new that my veterinarian has suggested that um, any one of my animals needs um, then I'm going to also include that so I am going to flip this camera around and show you do this, our first aid kit so um, I have recently replaced some items that were expired or getting close to expiring because like I said I, I usually check mine um, twice a year so if it's getting close to expiring, just go ahead and um, swap it out for a new one because you want to make sure that whatever you have on hand is good to use. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, a quick list of um, everything that's in this first aid kit and um, some other things that you want to have on hand close by in the event of an emergency. Um, so you need, I'm not going to show you all of my emergency numbers, but um, a list of emergency numbers and that's going to include animal poison control, any emergency vets in, uh, in your area, um, if there's more than one, if there's more than two that are close to you, um, have a list of all of them because you never know when one of them is just going to be slammed full and you might have to drive a little bit further to get to another one. And that's okay, I'd rather drive another 15 minutes then wait in a, you know a waiting room another hour before my animal gets seen so um, keep <clears throat> a list of all of your emergency numbers including your regular veterinarian because if you have pets that are in your house and um, you know they for some reason heaven forbid need to um, contact your veterinarian or have an emergency and pull out your first aid kit everything should be there um, <clears throat> you always want to, sorry hmm, you always want to hope for the best and plan for the worst and that's hard to do sometimes because you don't want to think about what that worst might be so um, you know it, it's hard to think about but as responsible adults we have to so what you want first you're probably going to start off with something you already have in your house and if not you should is your own first aid kit and like I said the easiest thing to do is to take your first aid kit and expand upon it and I um, recommend highly that anything in your first aid kit that your dogs or cats cannot have that you label it um, I actually just bought this first aid kit um, because I was replacing an old one so I still need to go through and, and label everything in here but highly recommend anything in your first aid kit that is toxic or not safe um, for your animals label it because if somebody other than you has to go for your first aid kit and um, they don't know that I mean you would feel terrible I would feel terrible so best thing to do is label it so we're gonna start with our own first aid kit and you'll see a few things in here there's a first aid guide that's um, obviously for people so you're gonna want to have another one and I'll show you what I have for animals tweezers Whoop. tweezers are important 
So we have some of those. Um, some antibiotic ointment right here. That is important for both you and your pets. Um, these sterile wipes are also good to have on hand. Um, not necessarily, I mean, you might need to clean the wound, but you also think about if you're really in an emergency, maybe you don't have water, you might need to clean your hands before you touch your animal um, if you're trying to help them as well. So all kinds of things you might need that for. Um, we've got some latex gloves. Again, you just never, never know um, what you might need gloves for. So they're good to have around your house anyway. And speaking of that, um, we've got some gauze pads here. Speaking of having things around your house, when I first started setting up my first aid kit for my pets, I just went around the house and started pulling things out that I needed. And um, because a lot of these things you're already going to have around your house, like tweezers, um, probably antibiotic ointment you're going to have around the house. Um, so start with what you have and, you know, continue working from there. It, it seems like a lot of stuff at first to go buy, but, um, you know, if you just buy a little bit at a time, you'll have your full first aid kit in no time. So, um, these are very pet specific, but also good for you. So we've got hydrogen peroxide. Um, I've got some wet ones. Um, which again are just, you know, for uh, cleansing your hands, possibly needing, it, it, you know, it, it uh, says it cleans better than hand sanitizer, so um, you never know when you're going to need those. Um, a cold pack. These are um, very inexpensive and you just never know when you're going to need something like that. So cold pack is good to have. Um, some hand sanitizer is recommended as well some sterile eye wash. I've got some more larger gauze pads. Um, this is important, some Benadryl. Um, now, I recommend having both tablets and liquid on hand because some animals you are not going to be able to get a pill in them. And um, especially if you're putting your uh, kit together for cats, it, they are notoriously difficult <laughs> to um, give them pills. So if all you can do is get pills, make sure you have a pill popper in your first aid kit as well um, and a, a little syringe to get some water down their throat afterwards. Um, I do not currently have um, any liquid Benadryl in my kit because when I went to the store all they had was a bubblegum flavor and I prefer not to have any flavoring in the Benadryl um, for my pets because they could really not like it and spit it out and you just don't, you know, that's, the, that's a whole other issue <laughs> in itself. So. Um, Benadryl, try to have both pills and liquid. Uh, we've got some Vaseline. This unlabeled bottle is actually Quick Stop. And um, most of you probably know what that is, but for those of you who don't, it is uh, a little powder that you can use to help stop bleeding if you accidentally cut um, your animal's nail too quickly to the quick and it starts bleeding, it'll help stop the bleeding. Um, if you don't have any quick stop, I get mine from the veterinarian. Uh, flour also works pretty well. So you can have a little, take an old um, pill bottle and you can just, you know, remove the label if you want or right over the label. Put some flour in it, that'll be um, almost just as good as having some quick stop. A handy dandy flashlight. This is a um, veterinary splint and these are um, easily found I think on Amazon. I've had this one for quite a while and fortunately have never had to use it. Um, this one is fairly large for, for a larger animal. Um, but you can kind of bend it and fold it any way you need it if you have, you know, a smaller animal. 
Um, but so they make them in different different shapes and sizes, and they kind of give you a little bit of instruction if you ever did have to use them. Um, I've got some rolled gauze, which is different from the gauze pads. Um, this right here is like a sticky. Your veterinarian uses it. Um, like if they draw blood. I only have one hand, so it's going to be difficult for me to show you this. Um, but you kind of unroll it. These are two rolls here, two different size rolls. Um, your veterinarian will use this around your dog or cat's leg. They'll put like a cotton ball on uh, the site where they drew blood and then wrap this around because it doesn't stick to the fur, but it sticks to itself so that you're not using tape um, because, you know, your animals have fur and you don't want to use something on them that's going to stick to their fur and your, then when you take it off, you can see, um, you know, you don't want to pull their fur off. So this is really good to have around um, as well to use. So I've got a couple um, like outdoor bottle, uh, not bottles, um, cups, bowls, outdoor bowls just in case you never know they're good for food um, or water they have a waterproof lining in them um, here I've got just some antiseptic wash that I got from the veterinarian um, you can also get uh, non-prescription and you don't have to have a prescription for this I just this is what I have and it's good so I'm not gonna go out and buy something else right now uh, because it hasn't expired and then let's see here we've got a thermometer We've got cotton balls and Q-tips. Here is that um, handy dandy syringe that I was telling you about as I drop all my Q-tips out of the bag. Um, let me show you this. So if you need to get water into your pet's mouth um, or any other type of liquid, it's you know just a just a simple syringe like that. Um, you, you can fill it with water and it makes liquids. A lot easier to get into your pet's mouth. Definitely recommend having those on hand. And um, let's see what else have we got here. I keep extra collars with current tags on them. I highly recommend having all of your pets microchipped. Um, and that's wonderful. All of your pets should be microchipped. I am in the process of getting all of mine microchipped. Um, it is a fairly large needle that they use. So anytime I have another animal that needs to go under anesthesia for say a dental cleaning or something like that, I go ahead and get them microchipped at that time. Um, you can get them microchipped without them being under anesthesia. I just prefer them being under anesthesia because I've seen how large the needle is. Um, <clears throat> but in addition to having your pets microchipped, having extra collars with current ID tags on them, very, very important. You never know when you're going to need these. Um, of course, you should always have a collar and tags on your pet, um, but having extras on hand is also very important. Um, and I know we can get kind of lazy sometimes and some, you know, we'll give them a bath and we take their collar off and oh, well, they've got a microchip. Totally understand. Um, both are very important and uh, will increase the likelihood that your pet gets back to you if anything ever happens. So here is uh, some other stuff that I like to have on hand. Um, some instructions on giving your pet CPR. Um, that's always good. You just never know. When you are in an emergency situation, you never know what you're going to do and that's okay because you have adrenaline running through your body and you don't think logically. <laughs> um, I, I've only had a couple of instances in my life where something like that has happened and I can tell you it is the strangest feeling, especially afterwards, because you look back at yourself and you're like, wow, I know better. I know to do X, Y, Z, what happened? So anything you can do to remind yourself of what you're supposed to do, to provide instructions in case you forget, 
it may sound silly, but have it there. Um, not only for you, but for somebody else who might be coming behind you who doesn't know what you know. And then there's a, a little instruction book that I got a while back um, that I have kept on hand that has some first aid information for cats and dogs. So um, that is currently what my pet first aid kit looks like. It's a pretty good one. Um, there are still a few other items that I'm going to be adding to it. And I am going to share with you what some of these other items can be and should be for you. I always keep all of my um, pets. Say hi, Gracie. I always keep all of their um, vet paperwork uh, together. And I keep it in a backpack. Um, because I, I'm a little OCD <laughs> about it, but I want all of their paperwork together in an emergency. I can quickly grab it, run out the door and go because you never know where you're going to wind up. You don't know if you're going to have to, in an emergency, if you have to go through checkpoints, if you have to show proof of rabies vaccinations, you want to have all of that information with you. So I keep it all in a backpack and it's all right there together. I can just grab it and go when I grab my pets. Um, so in addition to what I'm showing you here, um, having an extra nylon leash is a good idea. I have quite a few of them by the door um, because we take our dogs for walks regularly and I have mo more leashes than I have dogs. So grabbing them all at once for me would be very easy. Um, it's also recommended to have a muzzle. Um, I currently don't have one simply because I'm not a big proponent of using them. Um, there are some cases where you might need to use them, especially if you have an animal that you're not familiar with um, and you're having to, to work on them for some reason in an emergency. Um, they're just you know, you obviously don't want to keep them on the animal any longer than you have to because they can prevent them from um, sw sweating through their tongues. They, they, they need to breathe. They can prevent them from breathing properly. If you leave it on too long, I'm just, you know, if you want to have a muzzle, totally understand. Um, it's just not something that I currently have on hand. Uh, a foil emergency blanket. I actually have one on order and it should be here soon. Um, that's something really good to have on hand for yourself as well. So if you get multiples, um, that would be great. Uh, pillowcase, if you need to confine your cat for treatment, um, that is, I have a ton of those laying around as well. So I'm probably going to throw one in here. I, uh, it's also a good idea to have all of your pet carriers accessible and built. Um, I know some people, because they have they, you know, they want the extra storage room or they don't have a lot of storage space will break apart their carriers. Um, I don't recommend doing that because you never know when you're going to need them. So all of my pet carriers, I have uh, two different areas of the house where I keep them. And they're always built and they're always ready to go. Um, any ear cleaning solution you can get from your, you can get that easily from your veterinarian. Um, that's important to have on hand. I actually do have some and I should have grabbed it for my live video. It's in the other room because I... I was using it fairly regularly with Claire. Um, so I, I have, have your ear cleaning solution in your first aid kit. Um, there's also a lot of other things that you could have that aren't 100% necessary. Um, splints, I, well I do have a splint, tongue depressors, um, uh, needle nose pliers, I guess, that's just in case. You can also have nail clippers in here. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that you, you could just keep adding on and on and on. Um, these are some really good basics to always have. And I highly recommend you just take the time to start um, creating your first aid kit for your pet. Start by going around your house and just picking out the things you know you need that you already have in your house. You'll probably be surprised at how much you already have. Um, and then just, you know, little by little start adding on to that. So, um, yeah, I hope this helped you guys. I hope that it showed you how easy it can be to put together a first aid kit. 
and um, how important it is to have a first aid kit and to uh, go through it, make sure nothing is expired. Um, like I said, I go through mine twice a year and just make sure that everything is in date and that my thermometer works, that I have everything I need. I haven't gone through and pulled something out because I needed it and not put it back in there. Um, that can happen very easily. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Today, I hope you um, learned something. I hope it helped you out. Oh, bless you, Lucy. Bless you. Okay. Okay, I hope it helped you out. And um, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified the next time I go live on Facebook. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at CuriousKittyK9 and check out our website at www dot curious kitty dot com uh, where I have all kinds of great US made pet supplies and um, really really great pet beds I can't say enough about uh, the pet beds that I have uh, especially from West Paul and then there's also Coranda and then there's one of the uh, toys I recently got Kim these toys are absolutely amazing she is a diehard player she loves her toys. She plays with her toys all the time. She's very rough on them. These West Paul toys are next to indestructible. <laughs> we love them. So check us out at CuriousKitty.com. Subscribe, like, comment, and share this video, guys. And um, let me know what you want to see next because that could very well be my next Facebook Live. So um, thank you, and I will talk to you later.